now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have to really thank him. He he does this once every two weeks. We sit down and we do a couple of these, and I really appreciated it. I, I haven't gone back and figured out how many of these we've done, but I think it's surpassed 200. Jesus. <laughs> this is Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. So, so they've heard my life story 15 times. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Well, no, actually, you know, we don't know that much about you, okay? Uh, I, I, you're kind of uh, an enigma of sorts. <laughs> I'm an open book. Well, no, you're not an open book. I mean, you know, I mean, we've you know, we've never talked about your childhood and what you did when you were a kid and things like that. We you, we just know Larry Bubbles Brown is this uh, perpetually depressed human being. You know? Mm-hmm. So I was right. Yeah. Well, where did it, it, our, Let me put it this way: I don't. I don't like to ask comedians how are you really, because you create a persona on stage, and I don't think that that's that's what you want the people to think of you as. All right. So if you then say, well, you know, I'm really not depressed all the time, and I'm really a happy, jovial person yeah. personally. It then ruins your stage persona, right? Right. Someone said that comedians, eventually, they actually become their persona on oh, stage. <laughs> absolutely. Um, Kevin Pollack, I always use him as a perfect example, uh, he used to have a certain persona on stage. And then when he got off stage, he was a really nice, regular kind of guy. All right? <laughs> But at a certain point, he started becoming that persona off stage, and um, I think that does happen to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of, in a way, it's sad, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because they shouldn't have to. I mean, a, a guy like Tommy Smothers, who I seem to remember personally as being a rather intelligent. Uh, a stable person on stage he plays you know the brother you know <laughs> and or did play and he's dead now uh it's amazing to have to say um and and so you know it's a question of, of personas um uh, uh bobby slayton became more and more his off his on stage persona as i knew him you know so I mean, they, they they somehow they get that persona and then they start living it and then they're doing it full time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you find you do it full time? Are you yeah. are you uh, you know? I mean, I don't see you that often. I talk to you on the phone. Yeah, I think I've pretty much been the I've pretty much been like I always was, off stage and on stage. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're not a terribly depressed person. No, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm too afraid to commit suicide, so I don't think I'd ever do oh, that. Uh, but, uh, but I can't. I, I, that that I, you're absolutely right. And if I if I actually probably was smart, I would have committed suicide a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But I I could never do it. Could could you pull put a gun to your head and, and fire it? No, I thought about uh, you've thought about the ways to do it. Uh, I don't know how, uh, because sometimes people fire a gun in their head and they they live and they're all screwed up, or they start hanging themselves and only half hang themselves. Yeah, that's horrible. For, yeah. First of all, let's talk about suicide today. As long as we talk about upbeat things whenever we talk, let's talk about the upbeat beat side of uh, committing suicide. Yes, and we've known a few people that have committed And suicide. I've heard that committing suicide is really a hostile act against other people. I think it's a big F you, yeah. Yeah, because somebody's going to have to find that body. 
Right. And when they find that body and they see you blown your head off, that's something that will last with them for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, it might be your wife, and you want to get even with her. And this is your last way of getting even. I've always heard it was a very selfish thing that if you really wanted to commit suicide, there was this, uh, who was the... Who was the organization that was actually a suicide organization that promoted suicide? There's several now, yeah. That yeah. Are, uh, well, they, they, what they did is they wrote a book, and in the book, I bought the book. I can't remember the, the Mattachine Society was, no, that was like a gay thing. I'm trying to think what they called them. Hemlock Society, that was it. The Hemlock Society, and they put out a book about committing suicide. And in it, they said, you know, don't do it as a hostile act. Don't leave your body for other people to find, or at least in a state which will live with them for the rest of their lives. A blown off head is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. Hanging from a rafter somewhere is a form of that, okay? What they suggested is you commit suicide in ways maybe where they'll never find the body. And they said the best way to commit suicide and the least painful way to commit suicide is to go to the top of a very cold mountain and just sit there and freeze to death. They say it's very pleasant. You know, you would think it wouldn't be. You'd think you'd be get the shivers and everything like that. But they said no, that it, it, it's a very pleasant way to go. You go into a kind of euphoria, and then you start freezing, and then you're dead. And plus, you're on top of a mountain, and no relative has to find you. Uh huh. So that was their suggestion for the singularly best way to commit suicide. But by the way, folks, if you're listening to this, <laughs> don't go looking for a high mountain right now. But. Yeah. That was the way. I remember Wayne Shannon. Wayne Shannon. I'm trying. To he was a, um, a TV commentator on uh, Cron out here. Yeah, in, yeah, in right, the eighties. Right. He. Uh, that's what he did. Oh, he he went to the top of a mountain. He went. I was out. He was way up in Washington. He went way out in the woods and some isolated area. He just people couldn't find him, and they didn't find the body for months till till it thawed. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember. He was big, big, heavy guy, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And he's pretty he good. Of like a humorous spot on the news. So. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Did anybody ever think he was the kind of guy that would commit suicide? Uh, I, what I heard was uh, things changed, and uh, he was out, and then uh, I, he couldn't get work or something. So maybe there was something with that. Yeah. I hadn't seen him in years. I actually kind of knew him. So that's kind of stupid, though, because eventually you will get work, you know. Uh, but uh, so I, that was wow. I, I I forgot that he committed suicide. That I did not know. Um, but um, I'm trying to think of people who have committed suicide, and it's you know it. it I'm trying. Who was it? There was somebody who did it in a way that didn't impinge on other people. In other words, you don't want to do it in a way that's going to make other people upset. Right. They, they're going to be upset enough by your death, okay? People were upset by Robin Williams' death. How, when Robin committed suicide, how did he do it? That was a hanging. It was a hanging. Yeah. That seems like such a bad way to go, too, because you're kind of like, you're going to quietly choke. Uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I would do is, if I were going to hang myself, I would just make sure I had a knife in my hand in case, at the last moment, <laughs> you know, yeah. I had a change of heart, you know, and I could cut myself loose. Boy, people, people that are, have survived jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge, a lot of them say, after as soon as they jump, they change their mind. Wow. How, how many people have survived off the Golden Gate Bridge? Do you have any number on that? Uh, about 17 out of uh, 1,700. So it's literally one in 100. Is that, it up uh, to 1,700 now? Yeah. Really? Because remember we, we ran that. We were up to 1,000. <laughs> we were up to 1,000 on my radio show. We called it uh, what it was. was <laughs> I remember Lori Thompson named it this. Um, 1,000 by 2,000. That was the, <laughs> hilarious. 
And they, when they got down to, what was it, 990, I was doing this bit on the radio. I said we were going to give away a prize to the family of the guy, who, the person who commits suicide, uh, the 2,000th person to commit suicide, and I think we were giving away a microwave oven. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, they, so what they did was they stopped announcing when people would commit suicide. And part of it was to kind of blunt me and my little thing. And also because they said they didn't want to encourage people to be the 2,000th. Because they really were all, a lot of people wanted that microwave. Okay. <laughs> so um, they didn't tell us. But then I had people who knew the problem who were associated with like the highway patrol, I think one of them was, and a couple others. So every time somebody committed suicide, I knew about it. And I announced it on the air. And it was driving them crazy. They didn't oh, know how wow. I was finding That's this great. out. And finally, the 2000th did happen. And we had a big celebration and all of that. But then we decided not to give him the microwave because he was inconsiderate. Because <laughs> what he did is he walked onto the bridge and then jumped, causing a traffic jam. And so I figured, eh, no way you're going to get my microwave. So I took it home, you know. But uh, that was uh, that was the, and we got the 2000th. We nailed the 2000th the day after it happened. And it made them it just, they didn't know how I knew. That's great. You know, but I had an army out of people who wanted me to be able to complete this contest. And, uh, yeah. yeah, he jumped. It's about uh, twelve to sixteen a uh, a year that jump off the bridge now. Really? Mm-hmm. Don't they have a net under there now? They just finished it. Four hundred ninety-eight million dollars. Really? Which but, was a total waste. When you think that that much money could have bought so many uh, mental health centers, uh, it seemed like a waste of money to me. Well, at least it's pretty impossible to commit suicide now off the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, I don't know. It's the it's, uh, how a cab. They got this. It took years to put the thing up, and I haven't seen what it looks like. I saw a picture of it the other day, oddly enough, when I was watching television because there was some. They were doing a thing on CBS Sunday Morning about a guy who goes out and has been photographing the Golden Gate Bridge every day for the last twenty years or something. Guy has no life, mm. and. They showed the side of the bridge, and I mentioned to Marjorie, "Oh look, they put up they put up netting. You know, they put up a thing that if you try to jump, you're going to land in that. You're not going to land in the uh, in the bay unless I guess you could take a good running. Now there's not much you can do. All you can do is really go over the edge of the uh, bridge, and then jump. So probably the, the, you, there's no way you're going to go any further than those nets. Damn it." Uh, but anyway, it, was, it, it wasn't amazing how many uh, why why that became such a magnet for people to jump. But there must be other bridges in the country people have done that. Now there are two sides to that bridge. There's the city side of the bridge, and there's the ocean side of mm -hmm. the bridge. Which one do you think gets the most people committing suicide? Well, you would think it would be the ocean side, but everyone jumps on the uh, city side That's because correct. it's actually uh, it's actually harder to get to the ocean side. It's harder to get. To, oh, you mean? Yeah. Oh, because it's across the uh, bridge. Right. So you got to. You can't cross. Well, well, you can't there, cross it, the freeway because you might get hit. Well, so, you uh, could start in Marin County and get on that side of the bridge. Yeah, you could run up and stop your car and then jump over. But, by the way, we're giving you all hints of how to jump off the <laughs> Golden Gate Bridge. Don't say this show doesn't supply you with helpful information. We'll find the place where it's easier to jump over the net for you. Man, man, oh man. But uh, so, I mean, uh, two, they're up to 2,000, uh, 1,700 people? Around that, yeah, like uh, like 17 or 18 have lived. So it's literally one in 100 sh shot of living if you jump. Yeah, now people say, what, 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 you're jumping in the water, right? Well, when you hit that water from that height, it's like jumping off a building and hitting concrete. That's what they say. Yeah, you wouldn't think so. But, the way uh, you probably... I saw a thing about cliff divers, <laughs> again on CBS Sunday morning. 
and they have these contests and they have these really high, you know, diving boards built over cliffs. And they said that if you you have to be able to land feet down. If you land feet down, you're fine. If you land any other way, you could really hurt yourself or even kill yourself. Uh, and because I guess with your feet, you kind of make a knife into the water. It's uh, smooth. That's what they said about jumping off the bridge. You got to go feet first, kind of at an angle with your the best way with your arms straight up, and yeah. you might be able to survive. But if you're falling off that bridge, it's pretty hard to right yourself up so that you're, you know, unless you're an experienced diver. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, uh, again, folks, we're having a discussion about suicide. If you're planning on it, <laughs> um, what do you think is the most popular form of suicide? Do you know? Because you, uh, you have these kind of facts and figures. I used to, I, you know, a lot of people do it by handgun. Because it's just available, right? And quick, yeah. And quick, but it's sloppy. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 know, you put a bullet in your head and you think, oh, it's just going to be a little hole. That's all it's going to be. No, it blows your whole head off. Yeah, it's really messy. Yeah. So the last memory your loved one has is coming upon your body with your head blown to shreds. So that's not the way to go. That's really not the way to go. So did you ever have any friends that committed suicide? Uh, no. No. Um, have you? I mean, outside of Robin. No, I don't think so. I don't think I've known anybody that's committed suicide. I've had a couple of wives who wanted to because of me, but, you know, <laughs> outside of that, you know, it's uh, I don't I don't know anybody... I mean, I have had people who have been murdered that I knew. I had a business, oh, I had a business partner who got murdered. Um, and uh, that's kind of, kind of scary. Uh, but uh, I don't know anybody. You know, most of my, the people I know died in the hospital, you know. And there are more and more of them every day. You know, it's getting to the point where... Uh, Every day I hear about somebody I knew who died. And I guess that's the curse of getting older, is all the people that die and you have to, you know, kind of mourn their death. <laughs> that's an old Bill Cosby bit, I recall. <laughs> really? He said as you get older, you start off every morning, you know who died today? <laughs> oh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I think we were talking about, you know, about comedians and how... Some of them are accused of stealing jokes, but maybe they didn't steal them. Maybe they just came up with the same idea. Mm -hmm. Well, for years I've had this bit that I've done about I don't believe in God because if God, if there was a God, he wouldn't design the prostate the way he did by putting <laughs> the urethra going right through the prostate so that when it enlarges, you have a harder time peeing. Right. I mean, that's, that's just funny. bad engineering. Two inches to the right with the urethra, yeah. and people, men would not be having prostate problems, right? Uh huh. I thought, you know, it's my, my, my bit. I've been doing it for years. Guess who I was watching the other day, and he was doing the same bit? Lewis Black. Wow. Now, I'm not saying he stole it from me, because Lewis is hardly near me at all times and uh, in my sphere of influence. But that's a good example of where two people come up with the same idea. Sure, people think alike. Great minds think alike. Well, it is. It's not great minds, you know. It's in my case, it's you know a radio dolt. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's it's just like, uh, hey, what are we what are we talking about here? You know, it, it, you you can two people can come up with the same idea. Oh, sure, sure. In I, fact, just saw a, uh, I just saw a billboard for Lewis Black playing some casino, and it said farewell tour, so I guess he's getting out. Farewell tour? Yeah. Really? Maybe it's a he did, he did well. He scored well late in life. You know, I met, I met up with him later in life, you know, came to my show at, uh, at uh, Sirius XM, and he said to me, he said, 
you know, I was on your show in San Francisco. And as a comedian, he passed by and was one of the comedians I brought in because he was playing somewhere. I don't remember him. <laughs> I don't remember him. Okay? And he said, you might not remember me because I wasn't doing the same act. He said, I was doing a comedy act, and it was a pretty good comedy act. He said, but one day somebody told me, you know, you really can do well if you start shouting. And so he yeah, said, I or be angry. And be angry. He said, so that's what I did, and I became successful at it. And I, Isn't that he, amazing? He said, you know, the Lewis Black you had on then was not the Lewis Black who's here now. You know, and uh, I, I, I went, oh, well, that's great. You know, a lot of people probably pass by my show that I don't even remember. Yeah. That'd be nice to compile a list of everyone that you interviewed. I wish I had a list. I, yeah. You know, I wish... I, I, I have a lot of recordings because by then, see, in the early days to make recordings, you had to put them on a, a, a what is it, 11 inch uh, tape reel, you know, big reel. And that would hold an hour. So three of those would be one show. Wow. Okay. So you didn't save much because no. if, you, if you tried to save those things, you'd have to move out of your apartment within a couple of years because you wouldn't have room. Uh, then the cassette came along, and that's where I started collecting shows from uh, Live 105 and, you know, and earlier, right, in that San Francisco period. So I have almost, sitting in this apartment, every show I did in San Francisco. Got to I mean, be fun to go through, though. I'm sure if I, well, I've gone through a lot of it, but because they have the names on the tapes, but I've yet to find Lewis Black anywhere. But yeah, I'm sure it's there somewhere, you know. So uh, I have almost almost every tape. I still have a few, I think, in storage that have got to be uh, sent to me. But that's it. But it made it easier to save these shows. And now with computers, it's just like this. What we're doing right now, I'm making an audio file. And uh, how many of these could I put on a, a, a two and four terabyte disk? Thousands. You could probably put all your shows on one iPod or whatever those things were called. Well, I, yeah, I guess. I guess I could. I don't know. I mean, the stuff in San Francisco, I don't know. You know, it's three hours a day, four hours a day. How much did we do? We did four hours. We went yeah, not, six, to uh, ten. six to ten. Yeah. And and sometimes we ran over. If You, you ran know. over a lot, yeah. Yeah. Uh, something Howard Stern thought he invented, but I, in fact... Did. <laughs> mm. But uh, anyway, uh, so uh, back to so suicide. You don't know anybody's committed suicide. I try to think. I don't think I do. No. Yeah, and I don't. I'm trying to think. Was there somebody I knew that committed suicide? No. I mean, there are people maybe I've been associated with that might have. I mean, I you know I had Robin on my show once, so I guess I knew somebody who committed suicide. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, but I think that's also a very personal thing. You know, people want to commit suicide. I say, go ahead. You have the right. You know, uh, somebody once said that suicide is a is a is, is a way of uh, just making a decision for yourself. You know. Yeah, I I, I do a thing it, about it. I'm. Uh, uh, I was against, I was against the suicide net because I'm pro-choice. <laughs> No, I, I used to say that um, committing suicide is an acceptable form of self-defense. <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, I and I'm not encouraging any of you out there to commit suicide, and neither is Larry because neither Larry or I have the guts to commit suicide. You just couldn't do it, right? No, no, it's. Uh, I mean, you're afraid yeah. of dying like I am, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you know. And I'm yeah I'm in that period where I don't know I could live another fifteen years or I could live to be another year. Uh, Probably to me the worst suicides are those poor people that had to jump off the buildings in nine eleven. Well, that was yeah that was, 
I don't know what people were thinking at that moment. I guess they were thinking, if, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die going this way. I don't know. Oh, the fire is so painful. I get people always will jump versus burning up. So. Yeah. Well, we've certainly done another uplifting episode yeah. of Alex and <laughs> Bubbles. Let us start off your new year with a suicide rant. And be sure to send this particular episode to all your friends <laughs> who you know and love because it's another... Why don't we try to do next time a life-affirming episode? Transcripts are available at the Hemlock Society. <laughs> are they still around? Or no? I don't know. You're the funniest person I know. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, that's Larry. <laughs> that's Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome to our little uh, gathering here. We're uh, waiting for some people to call. We have a couple of people on the line. Uh, you simply uh, 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 go on to uh, GabNet.net, and over on the right-hand side of the page there's a column. And on there it says, uh, let me tell you exactly what it says, because I, uh, I know exactly what it says, but I can't remember it now. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Over on the right-hand side of the page. In fact, let me, uh, I can actually show you uh, what I'm talking about. Okay, um, let me see here. Well, wait a minute. That's weird. Oh, um, hmm. Well, I guess I can't show you. I don't know why not, but uh, you know, uh, I am. Oh, I see. That's why not. Okay. Uh, anyway, because you see, what happens if I do this? Uh, you get this. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. See that? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that cute? Yeah. I, I, I have no idea why that is the way it is, but it's supposed to be something else. Anyway, uh, you go over to the right-hand side of the page, and it says, Click here to join us at show t on Showtime at, um, uh, at, uh, on Zoom. Okay? And that's how you get here. Just click there, and it will take you there. I think you don't even have to have Zoom in order to do it. It will just kind of, uh, you know... Uh, take you there um, but anyway we have uh, people waiting to come on here and uh, a couple of them a handful uh, and uh, let me see here we'll admit them uh, there's hey how are you J Jason McKinney ladies and gentlemen Jason calls about once every oh I know three months or something like that and uh, we enjoy having him here hello Jason how's it going good good How's it going? Uh, and uh, then there's, uh, oh, look, there's Brian Neary, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you have some questions about automobiles? He pretends to know about them. No. You really, you really don't consider yourself an expert on cars, do you? No. Okay. I'm gonna ask everybody at work says, oh, Oh, by the way, I have this problem with my car. Or do you know a good person to do body and paint? You just and like, you the guys that do my body and paint are different from the you, guys that do your body and paint. You <laughs> just like really special cars, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just a hobby. Well, the it, guys that do my body paint don't know nothing about cars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but let me. I'll ask you a question in a second. Let me uh, also introduce Charlie and uh, hello, Charlie and. Uh, there's uh, uh, Josh uh, Wheeler, uh, who calls us every Friday because that's the day he's available. And, uh, oh, here comes Alan. Okay. Slightly more people than we had last night, right, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brian, uh, what I wanted to ask you was, I think I may have asked you this once before. I used to work for a computer company. Okay. Mm -hmm. As several and I was associated with several computer companies. And the people who work there all bought these ex exotic automobiles, Ferraris. Uh, uh, what's the other one? The big one? Lamborghini. Lamborghini. I had a friend who had a Lamborghini Diablo. 
Uh, and uh, what is it about computers and Silicon <laughs> Valley and, and exotic cars? Exactly. Uh, Mr. Owner Jason is correct. It's uh, it's <laughs> the money. <laughs> it's the money. It, it's the money because at my work, there's actually the one guy did buy something, but but um, it, it's it's the money because the people that I that I sort of hang out with that I oh. I think you're the only one on the show. Alex. Oh, oh, oh! Excuse me. I sometimes yep. I do that because yeah, I'm I I'm old and I and I and, and forgetful. There we go. There we go. Um, but it, it is the money because the people that I know through those kind of cars yeah. are people like that started Dropbox, that are the one of the head designers at Nike and that have worked for Apple forever. So I mean, these guys are all like well established. Well, just they, they're in different fields. Is so it it's they like. Make- make a lot of money and they just want to piss it away is that what it's all about yeah not piss it away but yeah have fun with it i guess <laughs> have fun with enjoy it. but i mean you yeah. would you would pull in you can pull into any uh, uh parking lot in any one of these silicon valley companies nothing but exotic cars in the parking lot you know? well you can tell when they went public because all of a sudden there'd be a lot of new cars in the parking lot oh really yeah my my stepfather who passed, he, he had a good story about that. He was working with one this guy he met, and then, yeah, he said, oh, by the way, when you come over, you'll notice there's a lot of new cars this this week because we went public last week, and then the people are buying stuff like crazy. Well, I'm coming into a bunch of money, okay? Hopefully. You've been saying that for so long, I don't think it's yeah. actually going to happen. Uh, no, 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 I've only been saying it for since about last April, actually. And, and uh, have you ever heard of a thing called probate? Yeah, usually it takes um, about a year. Yeah, so that's what it's all about. But anyway, uh, and I keep thinking about well, what things can I buy because I gotta, I gotta spend that money pretty fast before I die. You know, I mean, yeah, I only got I a couple we, of years none of us, here. None of us would be against of you buying this all a new car. I mean, oh, that's, oh, that's, sure, yeah, sure. Only people on tonight's show. So if you're listening, call in tonight. No, just, oh, there's, just there's just, nothing under my seat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, the last thing I, you know, I have thought about is buying a car, mainly because I don't drive anymore. No, 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 no. You know, uh, uh, and uh, even I will if tell I, you, Alex, you always say you're debating about being able to drive or not. You, you can't anymore. You lost the reflexes, the, yes. the muscle memory and stuff of yeah. what you need to do, the judgment and everything. Hey, if yeah. you don't do it and exercise it every day, it's not there anymore, and it it's not worth it. If you can afford to buy it, rent a taxi, you know, get a taxi and stuff. Well, you just depressed me. <laughs> it, it's, it's <laughs> not, I look, I look so forward to that day. I, you know, I wish I lived in New York where I wouldn't have to have a car. That's why I'm actually looking to move to Mexico where I moved to well, a you town. Know, just I, I'm just places. thinking about how I used to like living in California because I could get in my car and go places. Okay. Uh, and here I, I don't have a car to get into. And the, even if I had one, how often would I use it? And then I'd have to, you know, the insurance is really expensive here in New York City. Okay. You can't Story. leave it out on the street, so you got to buy a parking lot space or parking facility space. That costs about five hundred dollars a month. Then you got the payment for the car. Maybe if you're making a payment on the car, add all that together, and then you only use the car maybe once a month, once every two months. I guess. Yeah, and like like Jason's saying, is also your reactions about other people because. I mean, when I'm going to Lodi back and forth, man, so many people start drifting into my lane on the freeway and stuff like that. I'm taking, I'm looking at more cars around me than my own driving because my own driving is sort of automatic, like walking downstairs. You know, your your feet follow. Me driving there is easy, but it's like watching all these other cars in the semis. Well, I haven't driven in about five years. Okay. And I just have this feeling. I forget. You know how to start a car? You, you don't put the key in anymore and turn it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You, wait a minute. I, I know how you start a car. There's a crank in the front of it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you have to feed the you have to feed the horses first, and then they'll start going. Yeah. But anyway, so I mean, I'm I I I, 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 I thought, gee, you know, I I could buy an automobile if I wanted to, but I go, I can't, where do I put it? How do I use it? You know. No, don't and, waste your money. Yeah. And can I draw? No, I wouldn't have a car. You're living in Manhattan, I'm going to have a car. Are you out of your mind? You know, I went to yeah, I went to San Francisco last night. That's why I didn't call. But and I was worried about where I was going to park. If it was safe, 
my car's going to get broken into or anything, you know? So Yeah, but you see, the thing is, when I live in California, I get in the car and I'd want to go to the grocery store. I just get in the car and drive down to the grocery store. And I had a parking space in my in my garage, and that was it. Uh, and I use that car, you know, every day, two or three times a day, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that I used a, there you could use a car here. But you even just look can. at that example. Would you be doing that today? Even if you were in California and had sure. your car, would you have your groceries delivered? Um, I, I think I'd still go to the grocery store because when you got a car and you go down to the grocery store that has a huge parking lot, there's lots of space there, right? <laughs> and, uh, you go in, you buy your groceries, you put them in the back of your car, you take them home. You know, and it may only be a couple of blocks down the street, but I mean, it's all very convenient that way. Uh, on the other hand, uh, here in New mm -hmm. York, uh, yeah, everything I get is delivered now. I don't even go to Costco anymore. What? Huh? I use Instacart. Yeah, but you know what? You should go every once in a while. Yeah, well, so Marjorie got... can say, hey, Alex, you need any Kotex? No, it was yeah. the depends. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that, 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 that was the only fun we had going to Costco. Was Marjorie every time we would pass the depends, she would yell at the top of his voice, "Alex, you forgot your depends." So, you know, but I mean, get I get some, some exercise. You got to get exercise, so it gives you a good excuse. What, what that's exercise walking up Costco? and down the aisles of Costco are you kidding me sure. and then taking a a a lift down and a lift back I'm sorry that's oh. not exactly exercise yeah you know but I I tried some exercise a couple of weeks ago I went out took a walk you know but I don't walk as well as I used to I forgot how to walk <laughs> all right you know but no, it, 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 you just, I've just gotten to the point, like my business manager, I was talking to him today. He doesn't drive anymore. One day he had a slight accident and he felt it was because of his age, of his ability to just, you know, it was something he would have avoided years earlier, okay? And he just said, I've stopped driving. My wife drives me everywhere now. And that's awesome when people can admit that, and that's where it's bad. So many people can't admit, yeah. you know, I've lost this ability, and they still keep on trying. Oh, is somebody uh, told me their grandmother or something who's 90 still drives, and I go, yeah, yeah. my grandpa but did. Who, still who said that? Alan. Alan? Yeah, your mother or, or somebody who's 90? Oh, yeah, she's 90, and she still drives. Fair, yeah. I think drive? I think I just passed her last week because I was yelling at some lady. Again. <laughs> so were, were, but, were you? Were wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! She wasn't bothering your driving. How can she do that when she's driving on the sidewalk? That's oh. right. <laughs> I was walking on the sidewalk. I'm done. Huh? Okay. Yeah, but I, you know, it's the whole thing. You know, when somebody's really slow or doing something stupid, you know, you always look and. Nine times out of ten, it's some old person who can barely see over over the dash. And they're right up to the steering wheel, and it's like, what is that person doing driving? It, it's kind of like the people that drive McLarens. They, you know, they, they <laughs> run you off the road. They run you <laughs> off the sidewalk. But that, but they don't check your, but, right? They don't check. They don't do any driver's test anymore, right? Alex, when you get to a certain age, they they, they just keep mailing them in, right? Well, no, they don't mail them in. You have to go down and get them. You have to take an yeah, eye. They, they have they to. You have, the wheel. You, you have to take the eye test. Oh yeah, okay. but, but that's you don't put you behind the wheel, right? Oh, well, listen, I've got a, uh, I've got a, a driver's license right now that will carry me till I'm ninety. Mm -hmm. You know, well, and then how can you get another one? Probably, probably. Yeah, but how? Just like go in there and they just fill out the form and you get it. I think you know, I would go I driver's think, test. I, I would. Yeah, I know I, that's my point. <laughs> like no, no behind the wheel. I wouldn't do it because it takes too much time, and at my age, I'm not going to drive anyway. If I'm ninety. Forget right. it, you know. I hate to say this, Alan, but screw your mother. She shouldn't be driving. <laughs> what an inconsiderate bit. Well, I won't go that far. <laughs> Taking up okay. an extra parking space. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but I, I do feel bad that I don't have the 
I don't live somewhere where I can just get in my car and go somewhere. Well, you, know? you could always go on vacation somewhere. You can go yeah. to San Jose, rent a car. Well, no, but I liked it when I lived in California, lived in San Francisco, and, you know, I just get in the car and go over to Marin County, go the, right. you know, through down the back roads and everything, and it was just really nice. It was very... Uh, and I didn't, you know, it's something you're talking to me about, you know, well, you should get out and do more walking. How much walking do you do, Brian? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Well, I'm like nonstop during the day. What do you mean nonstop walking? When I go up to, Lo when I go up to Lodi, I I'm walking around the factories all, all day. I got to look busy. The factories. Yeah. But that's it. How many it. steps a day is it? You know. oh, like a, what was that? Do you check oh, your steps know. a day? I don't know. I don't know. I, I bet, my... I bet, I bet, uh, Alan just gets in his car and drives somewhere and gets out and goes into the grocery store and then gets back in the car and comes home. How much walking is that? Um, you know. I average uh, about 3,500 steps a day. Really? If you a big white van and you can't park that near the stores because there's compact parking only. <laughs> I do 3,500 steps a day and it's just in this apartment. Yeah. <laughs> you got to remember, this is a big apartment. Yeah. You know, yeah. my wife hates on me because I only do like three miles a day and she does like nine miles a day. Really? Uh, and that's all in the house? Well, I have my watch and it, it has the little thing with the, with the uh, you know. Pedometer? But, but yeah. The, the uh, not a pedometer, but it has exercise of like walking and tells me how far I've walked and, uh, you know, how much ener Pedom exercise pedometer. I've done. Yeah. It has all that stuff. So. Uh, I I I I will hate the day that I can't drive anymore. You you will hate the day you can't drive anymore. Yeah. yeah well, I don't be. know that I can't drive. I just I think about it and I go, wait a minute. If I get behind the wheel of a car and now I gotta go down the street, I maybe can go down the street, but then I gotta get on the highway. See, once you get on your get your money from all this money you got coming in, go to some resort that's big enough that they give you a golf cart, so then you can drive yeah. your golf cart around. Well, that would just go. be fun. Well, Marjorie yeah. says we can just hire somebody to drive us. Yeah, really. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm driving you wherever you guys go. Oh, no yeah. Yeah. I'm you there. tell me if I come to California, drive. Yeah. What are you going to do? You go to Spain, wherever I'll go there. Oh, okay. I have a lot of PTO. Oh, okay. You have to be a lot more flexible to get into his little ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. See, that, that my first thing is. I said, whenever I get out of the McLaren and if I touch the ground as I'm trying to get out of the car, then I'm selling it. <laughs> so that's that's going to be the first thing, knowing that I, I going to start to slow down. Well, well, but don't you, when you get out, if you put your hand on the on the door jam, don't your knuckles hit the ground? <laughs> no. Well, see, here's Pretty something. Here's something I don't. I don't. Hey, Mr. Crane, we almost had to get to get you out of my car. Well, yeah. I, I don't know. You know, I we um, we take we go take like a lift, right? And we get into the lift, and uh, then we get out. And mm -hmm. it's harder to get out these days for us. Mm -hmm. But I think it's it, 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 there is a kind of uh, it, it is pr it is more difficult to get out of the back seat of a car these days. I think. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So how how they're designed in that back? It, yeah, I mean, it, it's just I hit my head. And everything what I do, I usually grab the hand hand thing up above yeah. and just boost myself oh, out hmm? yeah, that was but you, even getting in my car now i get in my car and i'm like i feel like i'm very lethargic getting in there and i'm like wow man am i really am i getting old because i feel like i'm not like just hopping in the car like you know like when i was younger but i don't know now so i was saying, saying if i wore uh boxers instead of briefs that something might touch the ground before i get in the car <laughs> <laughs> not with you that too yeah if that happens first then i'm so yeah are we bragging? <laughs> no, I, I don't think you brag about your balls drooping. Oh, oh, that. that yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If I were to wear boxers instead yeah, of where briefs did, trying to get where, into his car. Where did that elasticity go? You know? <laughs> I don't know. Everybody that I know that's older claims their balls. And Charlie's me. laughing because he knows it's true. <laughs> I'm only in my 40s, and my wife already makes I, fun of me about it. I want to know where the hair under my armpits went. To your nose. When? Your You're ears. probably right. <laughs> you know. Um, but anyway, um, so anyway, I got a, um, you know, I, people make comments. We do our show, and then there's, you know, on the page, you can do some comments if you want to do a comment or whatever. And I do a comment. 
And uh, I have a, a comment thing where you can say something, and then I get it as an email. And I get one uh, tonight uh, from um, my third wife out of the four. Uh, Your third my third wife? My third wife. And she says, stop talking about your teeth all the time. And I'm going, you know, I talk about my health. I, you know, I'm a hypochondriac. You all know that. And so should she. And, yeah, but I don't talk about my teeth that much. Your clipper idea? Oh, you talked about the other night about getting your uh, implant put okay, in. Are you, yeah, you and the no, But that's it, you know. I mean, I was talking about the miracle of science now that allows them to do it so fast it's ridiculous, you know. Mm -hmm. Did you see the instant messenger I sent? Yeah, I was saying that somebody stole your clipper idea. What was that? The clipper idea. You know your little clipper where you put your, you know, how you had your little temporary. Tube well, what happened thing. once when I when I was here? I go. She's going to write me again and go. Don't talk about. <laughs> I say routine. somebody stole your idea. They already did. Hey, hey, tell her get on the show. We have a lot of questions for her. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. Uh, uh, but you can ask them a Marjorie. You'll get the same answers. <laughs> you know, uh, but I. Um, the thing with the clippers are, in case people don't know what a clipper is, it's a false little false tooth that you take it, and if you're missing a tooth, you can take it and shove it up in there, and now you've got a tooth. And oddly enough, after you use it all day, you, you don't even notice it's there, right? Uh, and it would save a lot of people money if they could do that instead of uh, of, uh, of of getting uh, a, uh, an implant. implant. Okay, because yeah. it cost maybe seven hundred dollars or something like that, and and um, so, it, it, but my dentist, I said to them when they lost tooth, I said, you know, could you, could I just get a clipper? Would you just get me one of those fit me for one of those clippers? And she said, we don't do that anymore. And I said, why? They're wonderful. And she said, because people swallow them. And I'm thinking, so it's a little piece <laughs> of plastic, right? You know, kids swallow bigger toys than that. And you just wait for it to come out in their stool or whatever, you know. Uh, I mean, it's 750 bucks, so you're going to be down there digging around to make sure you find it. But I, I what, saw, it's going I to send you a it, commercial to, it's a company that basically does that. They send you the kit to make your own implant at home and you make send your it own out to implant. Them. Yep. And then you send it back to them and then they make your little tooth and. Yeah, but you, an in. implant oh. is a thing they screw into your jaw. I'm not not, gonna... not an implant. The, they make your, they make an impression of your mouth, and it, it just pops in like dentures or whatever, and just clips in. And that's why I say, and they stole your little clipper idea. I do an impression of my mouth. Hi, I'm a tooth. I hurt. Anyway, that was my impression <laughs> of my mouth. But no, you know what they're doing now, though. I was saying this last night. You remember they, they? If you've ever gone, that maybe you had to get a crown or something, and they put this goo in this little tray, and they stick it in your mouth and let it sit there for about five, ten minutes, and then they pull it out, and then they make a plaster cast, and they send it off to the place that's going to make your tooth, so they can see how big to make the tooth. All right? They're not doing that at my dentist anymore. They're taking impression digitally of my mouth. And I guess now they have it all the time, so if they ever need it, you know, they just do it. But this woman was doing this thing. I said, what are you doing? And she said, well, look, I'm making an impression of your of your mouth in, digitally. And that's what they do. And then they just send the digital uh, thing to the, uh, to the place that makes the teeth, and they use that as their template for making your, uh, your crown. See, so if you're listening, uh, ex-wife, I'm talking about teeth again. All right. And it was a 44 year old who brought it up. <laughs> yeah, a 44 year old who brought it up. Hey there, Josh. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. It took 25 minutes to realize he was here. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I said hello to him. I mentioned his name as we, as I do with everybody. Well, didn't say hi to me. Yes, okay. I, yes, I <laughs> Okay, I'm nobody. Oh, is me. Do I have to say hello to you? No. I wouldn't. If you were walking down the street, I wouldn't say hello to you. 
I wouldn't okay. say hello to you either. It'd probably cross the street. The road, oh if man. you came over to my house for dinner, I wouldn't say hello to you. <laughs> I'd say shalom. <laughs> shalom. Yeah, right. Right. But <clears throat> uh, but um, um, anything uh, anything floating your boat tonight? Uh? See, I say that, and he says, well, not really. And then he goes into a 20-minute explanation of something. What? I don't know. Today in particular, it's been a week since the last time. So, you know, I did tell Patrick that I thought that it was a good thing that Nikki Haley didn't kick sideways or she might have finished fourth. So, you know, that turned out good for her. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, if she kicked sideways, she might have she might have finished fourth. Well, you got to admit, we're all not kind of, kicking sideways allowed her to finish. We're her. all we're all kind of rooting for her. Oh, you, you know, well, I mean, I, I I would never root for her under normal circumstances, but in this case, you know, what you know what I I absolutely find the most disgusting thing about Trump is when he goes after his competition in, say, the political race. He doesn't say, oh, well, that, uh, you know, Nikki Haley, you know, she doesn't know a lot about this subject or that subject. She'd be very Her bad Her name at, is Nimrod. She'd be bad at handling the Gazan crisis or whatever. No, he just goes, ah, uh, she's stupid. She's dumb, you know. Her real name is Nimrod. Her real name is Nimrod, yeah. Her name, you know, real name I mean, is Nim, Nimrat, Nimrad, Nimrod, Nimrada. Nimrod, Nimrod. I mean, I, I don't know what the the goal there was. I mean, she she wasted all that time being so careful to make sure she didn't mention his name. And mm. I mean, what I mean, it, it got her a, a it got her a finish behind a guy that everyone is basically not even is running, but not even running in DeSantis. I mean. It, it, she couldn't even beat the guy that nobody can stand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. But I mean, he, he did put all of his eggs in one basket, though, you know, didn't he? I Who? mean. A DeSantis, you mean? DeSantis, yeah, in friggin' uh, uh, Iowa. He put okay. he put basically everything into Iowa to do everything he could there, and now he has nothing left. By the way, by the way, nothing cuter than a kid with a cat, okay? <laughs> Our readings are going through the roof. There we go. Yeah. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay, go, 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 go. I mean, I'll go under the... Just know, man, next thing you'll know, she'll be driving. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, so scary right now. Dude. Dad, Dad I got a new kid. boyfriend. Can I take the McLaren? <laughs> <laughs> no, she... Yeah, but... it's just, I don't know, it was just a lot of work to finish, you know, and third place when she's 32 and goes on her first date um <laughs> but anyway 32. Ryan will be riding around with a pickup and a shotgun yeah well that's what i'm saying you know i just told him keep a baseball bat by the door until she's at least uh you know 18 <laughs> is she still there yeah she's trying to get the cat out will you just get out <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's fatherly love for you. Goodbye, Adrian. We'll miss you. Wait, now she's under the bed. <laughs> Boy, does that bring back memories. Huh? <laughs> you were under the bed a lot? No, no. You ever notice that every cat with a kid looks like Pepe Le Pew when somebody is, like, uh, trying to hold him or something, you know? Or the cat, when Pepe Le Pew is trying to hold the cat, the look on the cat, that's how cats look when kids are holding them. They go, Ooh. Did I tell you the other day? You know, she's so tall. She's she's like, so. I know, she's huge. Went to the nurses. She went to the nurses the other day, and I don't know if I told you guys this, but she went to the nurses the other day, and the nurse thought she was like a fifth grader or something, and she asked if she's had her first period yet. <laughs> Really? Because she, she, her stomach was hurting really bad, and so that's the lady said, "Oh, have you had your first period?" Just, <laughs> so, uh, what's that? <laughs> she, well, she's, too she, bad. Her answer wasn't. I like the 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 uh, teacher in the second period better. How old yeah. is she? She's seven, right? Eight. Eight. Yes. Yeah, eight. 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 Yeah. 
but she, she but like she we went she saw some fireman guys oh how old are you like 12 she's all no <laughs> well you're eight. you're how tall you're five you're you're five six, four, four. <laughs> no, six four six four yeah so she's getting that tall quality from you probably not from you yeah wife. she is i have my growth spurt like in junior high but she's she has it early so it's yeah it's pretty how tall is your wife i don't have a wife Divorced. I mean, I mean, oh, how, how tall is your baby mama? How, how, my partner. <laughs> how, okay, so how, how, she's, how, she's how, five, how five. tall is the woman you're I, shacking up with? <laughs> Six. Oh, that girl or her? Where's one? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's right like five, 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 five. Yeah, five, five. I guess. Oh, okay. So for Vietnamese, she's tall. For Vietnamese, no, she's if, tall. If the, fire, she has to tall. if the fire they, department thought she was 12, you're gonna wonder why they keep driving by the house four yeah. or five times a day. The the good the good thing is like she has dance competition this weekend, so um, so she's in the category. She's seven and eight year old. So when the judges when they group them, so when the judges see her dance, she knows she's that age. Because if she's in like seven to ten, if they had bigger age gaps, they would all think that she's ten, but she's performing. You know, she's only eight, so wow. she only has the capability of an eight year old. When ten-year-olds can do a lot more, so that's incredible. That's incredible. So we'll be right across the street, Kevin. We'll be at the uh, Double Tree Inn. So if you want to stop by for a quick shot or something, say hi. Where? Uh, at Santa Clara, right across from uh, oh, Levi. Oh, oh, oh! I'm not going tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, sold, I sold my tickets. Oh, what are you? What were you? What are you talking about? What are you going to? 49ers. 49er oh. game. 49ers, the 49ers yeah. uh, grand finale of the season. Can I ask it's you because you the know, next step? I, I'm not the next very, step. I'm not very good at sports. Okay, at knowing about sports. How much does a ticket to a football game cost? These don't ask. Days? Don't Let's just say for one ticket, I paid back at Candlestick. I paid for my whole season. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. My whole season was 120 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, and the tickets now are about 120 bucks a game. Well, and Kevin is Kevin. Kevin can see everything from his seat. Let's put it that way, okay? Yeah, <laughs> like the Bay Area and everything. Oh, yeah. well, I, see. I see. If I don't, if I don't get an ADA exchange, yes, which they have yeah. So his seats are with. his seats are reasonable compared to you know seats down well, below. I, 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 lo I love to tell tell. I always love to keep telling the story about the time Wally Haas uh, gave me a. Free, gave me free tickets to go to the uh, to the uh, oh yeah way up top uh, the what do you call it the um, seagulls uh, uh, no well, the, the uh, Oakland A's all right yeah and he says come on I'll give you so I go to the box office I'm Alex Bennett give me tickets and give me the tickets I go to the thing I show the guy the tickets he goes <laughs> I go up there he says yeah I'm just uh, row uh, row uh, Z I think it is <laughs> you know. <laughs> And I go up the, to the, and I'm literally, my seat's back is to the wall yeah. in the back of the stadium. And you get shit on by the seagulls up there. Well, yeah, well, you know, I was sitting next to a guy flying the night mail to Omaha, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah. So I then go on the air on Monday, and I go, fine celebrity I am. Right. Wally Hossacks <laughs> asked me to go to his game. Uh, you know, at the at Oakland A's. And I go, and I have tickets that are, like, all the way at the top of the stadium. Wally, well, football, what's that all about? Next thing I know, football, I get it. I don't mind that because you can see everything. You can see the plays develop. It, you That's get where it. all the coaches and yeah. everybody else sit. They sit way up on top so they can, can see, see the everything happen. from up there, though? Oh, yeah, you can see it oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. anyway, so I, uh, I, I, I then get a call from Wally's office, his secretary. Wally is so sorry <laughs> about the tickets. He's going to give you tickets anytime you want, and we'll, we'll seat you better. Well, a couple of weeks later, I decided to go with my girlfriend, who, by the way, w when she knew that we were going to be sitting closer to the field, Brought her baseball mitt with her. Yeah. So baseball is better. Yeah. So we they they put us right over the uh, dugout. It was mm -hmm. the owners' seats, and it was very nice of Wally. I yeah. thought that was mm -hmm. wonderful. But I I had to complain about it in order to get them. 
But I, I said to her, we, we have tickets to the A's game. And then we wind up with these seats. Where, yeah, you, you really do know him, really? I got seats in the on the first row right on side the field on the sidelines for a San Diego game back when Kaepernick was there. And while it was pretty cool to be there, it really isn't a good place to watch football. Where like, the, you the, don't the, see everything. I mean, when they start going down the other end of the field, it was like right on the 45-yard oh, oh. line. When they get down the other end, you can't really judge where they are or what they're doing, you know. Well, here's the, a the coaches and shit know what they're doing the because nice they know thing what they're about having telling the them. Television that tells you right where they're at, and right. Yeah, the television, television is, is great nowadays. I mean, yeah, so. yeah. But the thing is that uh, my friend Shecky, who worked for Letterman, a lot of people would sometimes say, "Can you get get us tickets to the show?" And he'd say, "Yes, but I can't put you on the on the floor. Uh, I have to put you up in the balcony." And the reason I have to put you up in the balcony is Dave doesn't want comp seats in the front because he says they don't laugh as hard because they got in for nothing. <laughs> really, yeah. it was really yeah. a good, good, good reasoning. So they would then complain about it. Well, I don't want to sit up in the balcony. I want to be closer to Dave and whatever. And he'd have to explain to them the best seats in the house are in the balcony because if you're sitting on the floor of a of a uh, theater that's doing a television show you can if you want to be in the front row there are nothing but cameras in front of you you can't even yeah. see dave at the desk but if you're all the way upstairs you're going to be able to see the whole show from up there so it's the same kind of thing as what you're saying about football you know so you know where the best seats are in football right now where? ford field baby <laughs> hey, hey, Jason! You showed that that last week. That that's a new logo or something, huh? What? what no, it's a throwback. Doing? It's a throwback. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. that's back from the seventies. Uh -huh. I thought it was pretty cool. I was I was trying to get a different kind of shirt, but that was yeah. the only one I could get. But I still like it. I love yeah. Lions. What, what, what team are you talking? What? What? what Lions. What, the Lions. Detroit Lions. Lions. Detroit Lions. Do you know where they? Do you know where they're from, Alex? The Lions. Africa. <laughs> I just said. <laughs> you silly, well, I, silly person! Little... You what? I do. I know where they're from. Yeah, the Lions. What city are they from? Uh, uh, it's uh, Detroit, I believe. Very good. Okay. See, I'm very good at this. I don't know Correct. why. Brian has trouble hearing because Jason just said they were from Detroit. <laughs> I know, but he can. See. <laughs> they're America's new team. No, mm -hmm. no, usually, if you tell me the city, I can tell you the name of the team. Pistons. D um, Pistons. I believe that's the Detroit Pistons. <laughs> Red Wings. Oh, Detroit Red Wings. Oh. Yeah, he's. Uh, okay. I, I never heard of them. Uh, but oh, Detroit Red Wings. I don't know what Kevin had, but. Squids. I don't know what Kevin had, but. Honestly, the postseason tickets for baseball were always more expensive than the ones for football because the way that they ruled that you had to buy all those fucking ticket strips. They, you know, yep. they don't let you buy games at a time. Yep. Yeah. And then, I used to have to buy those strips all, yeah, all at once. And they've actually changed it now to compete better, but back not that long ago, eight, nine years ago, when you bought them, you also couldn't buy it by series. You had to buy the entire postseason. Oh shit! Any possible game that they would play, and you had to pay for it up front. Yeah. And then if they didn't play those games, they yep. would credit your account. They give you credit, game. yeah. So yep. you know, if if your team made the wild card as a, a postseason, mm -hmm. they would sell you the wild card round, the divisional series round, the league championship series mm -hmm. round, and the world and series. And the world and series. We're going to host every game <laughs> and make yep. you pay. And it was like fucking. Yeah, take my $2, money. dollars or whatever. I mean, it was yeah. ridiculous. But, you know, like last year, you get your postseason price guide as soon as your team makes it, or maybe before if they're likely to. And if the AFC Championship game had been in Cincinnati instead of Kansas City, my ticket was going to be like $130 or something where I sit for the AFC Championship. I mean, I was like... I would have paid you want to, you don't want to know what's more expensive you, than, you, I mean, you, want, you want to know what's more expensive and brought than uh, than uh, football seats Broadway Broadway oh yeah I mean some tickets are going for two hundred and fifty dollars a piece are they in Detroit <laughs> Alex, 
<laughs> Alex, we were trying to help you keep your sports at me, and then you started talking about Broadway. Well. <laughs> then... 250 is cheap for the playoffs. There are some poor people that paid $1,000 yeah. to watch the Cowboys tank last well, week. Well, you know, you get yourself yeah. a front row. Oh, yeah. Row. yeah. Well, you get a front row seat or, you know, orchestra seat. Standing seats. room only right now, $500 at Detroit. <laughs> Yeah, really? I mean, it, you know, it always depends. I mean, but that's resale too, you know. But season ticket holders get it at basically the face value with their discount, and then their postseason ticket is locked in. And I believe the NFL mandates how much they can change the price from the regular season to the postseason, and it depends on the round. And like, they can charge so much in the wild card round, so much in the divisional and so much in the championship round so that's what i'm saying mine are locked i mean like mine kevin's everyone i mean they're locked in so you know like they can never just say oh you you want to go to that playoff game it's 500 bucks well i mean you know they could only do that if i had a regular season seat that was like 350 yeah, this bucks, is so far they can't do that far and away out of my bailiwick <laughs> Because I just thought about it. I never in my life have ever paid to see a sports event. Wow. Yeah, I've paid to see concerts. I paid to see Broadway shows, you know, and I'm gay. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, but no, I've never, I don't think I've ever paid to go see a sports event, a sporting event. Um, no. no. But you should never have had to. Jeez, you're Well, I mean, no, what, on the radio. No, but there was a time in my life where yeah, I, just I'm sure you mentioned stuff by accident well, and mean, all of a sudden it was in the mail. Well, that's true. <laughs> I bet he never asked to go Okay, see I'm going to tell you Miami. I'm going to tell us some stories. I'm going to tell you this is a great story. Uh, so what was it? Oh yeah. So uh, what happened was I had a guy by the name of Joe Rogelski at, when I was at... Uh, I remember Joe. Where was it? At, uh, at, uh, at the Quake. Live 105? At the yeah. Quake. The Quake. At the, the Quake. Quake. Yeah. yeah. Laurie Thompson was Live 105. Uh, but, right. Uh, and um, he always used to mention Irish Spring soap or some kind of soap. What, no, it, was, it, was, it wasn't Irish Spring. It was... Uh, Lever 2000? No, no. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the soap now, but it was some kind of like cheap soap they Zest? sold at Safeway. Dial? <laughs> Just don't. Zest fully clean? Oh, geez. Now I'm never going to get it. Okay. So forget it. You've screwed up my mind. Anyway, he's always mentioning this as a joke, right? Because he thought it was a funny name for a soap, right? So um, he mentions it so much that so one day he gets a big box. And he opens up the box, and it's like two or three cases of this soap with a note saying, thank you so much for mentioning our product on your, on your show. So he then mentions this. We make a big joke about it on the air. And then I say, gee, that's amazing. You just mention a product, and they send you that product? Boy, do I love that new Apple computer, that new Apple Macintosh. <laughs> That a new Apple Macintosh I hear is terrific. I wish I had one. Never got one. But wait a minute. Two days later, I get a I call at story. home from my boss saying, uh, Alex, um, two giant boxes have arrived here from Apple. And I said, say anything on the outside of the box? He said, one says monitor, the other says... Uh, uh, no. uh, Macintosh. So I say, well, what do we do about it? He said, well, the you know, we, said. He, I, we've talked to the lawyers, and it's okay for you to keep it, what, whatever's in those boxes, okay? So I said, well, I'll be right down. I wanted to go get my my <laughs> uh, my Macintosh and so on. So I run down to the station, and I get the two boxes, and they're they're pretty heavy, and I put them in the back of my car, which that's the great thing about having a car. You can put your stuff in the back of the car. And I drive it home, and I go upstairs with the two boxes, and I open them up, and inside are any number of bars of that soap that Joe Rogelski <laughs> was talking about. <laughs> oh, shit. 
and, and they sent it from Apple. They, 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 they uh, you know, I said, boy, I just wish I, you know, and so I, I was very disappointed in that, and my <laughs> boss laughed his ass off. <laughs> he said, of course, I said, last year, laugh your ass off. You had to talk to lawyers. That cost you at least some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, so I always I always thought that was wonderful. Later on, by the way, uh, Apple did, uh, did did comp me a computer. So, you know, because I I I just I think I said something about I just didn't think that uh, oh, oh I didn't think that uh, uh, Macs were that great I, because I was a PC guy at the time, mm -hmm. and um, so they sent me a Mac. And I got to tell you, this was at the time when Jobs wasn't running the company. Yeah, I remember it was a piece of shit. That's man. exactly what I was about to say. It was Ten a foil big, separating stuff. Yes, yes. The uh, they they had a hard drive in there that was protected by tin foil. <laughs> and I just went, "This is the biggest piece of crap." <laughs> and I, I I finally they said, you know, it was it was a loner. They just sent it to me and said, you know, when you're Keep when, it. when you're through using. So I call them up and I say, uh, I got to tell you, not a very good computer. And they say, well, don't worry, you can keep it. <laughs> they didn't even want it, you know. So, but that that was the time that I did get a computer from. Uh, Imagine if you still had it, how much it would be worth. That computer. Probably yeah. not that one. If I had one of the old Macs, the original Macintoshes, you know, uh, it might be worth something, you know. But uh, 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 those, but that, uh, those were really bad. They were, they were. It was horrible. It was the worst computer I ever owned. I hardly ever. I I tried it a couple of times and I hardly ever turned the thing on. And I sat there for a while and then finally one day I just said hell with it. And I dumped it in the garbage. Yeah. So anyway. Anybody else have any good stories at all about football and baseball and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, there was some good stories after this weekend. Hmm? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now. See, are the you're just waiting, aren't you? <laughs> what do you mean? Are you the 49ers? Oh, wait a minute. You're for the 49ers, right? Kevin. Kevin, yes. Kevin, yeah. You're for the 49ers. And who is, who is, who is Brian for? I'm against the 49ers. Yeah. No, but no th 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 Charlie, he's against the 49ers. It doesn't no matter who ways. they're playing. He, he's against this week. Okay. Well, I'm against the 49ers then. What there the hell? we go. I'll, I'll, I'll join the rest of you. Well, fuck you all. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, no. Well, I'm, I'm for the Lions. I want to see. I want to see Eminem uh, do halftime. <laughs> Actually, well, I'm for the Lions, too. Well, I've, I've often told this story, you know, I don't know how football is played. To this day, I do not, I know you're laughing already, but I do not know how the game is played. And you get I, four times to make the ball but move don't, 10 don't, yards. But don't, 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 don't. That's all this. There now, we go. Four <laughs> tries to move the ball 10 yards. If you are able to, you get four more tries. Well, do I get to go down That's to the it. field and move the ball 10 yards? If you can move it 10 yards well, if nobody, versus the other team, then yes, you if, get four more tries. If nobody's tries. in my way, I think I can do it. Yeah, go ahead. Try. <laughs> okay, People well, are going to be in your way, though. Uh, next time I go there to a go. football game, I'll tell them that uh, Jason told me that I could come down and move the ball. Four ten, tries to move it 10 yards. To move it 10 like, yards. Who the fuck is Jason? Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to sit there and bust your ass down and say, hey, nope, you didn't even move it a yard. But I had like, <laughs> I, I had 49ers on my show, and I would say exactly what I said to you. I don't understand how the game is played. And they would try to explain it to me, and nobody was able to explain it to me. That's the easiest way is, is you get four tries to move it 10 yards. If you're well, able to do that within <laughs> any amount of those tries, you get four more tries. You could probably be a referee in the NFL then if you want. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alex, Alex, he doesn't know the rules. Uh, right. you know, uh, he did a report. He did a report. <laughs> Kevin, why are these people putting down our team, the 49ers? I don't know. I don't listen to them. The 40 winers? They don't, they don't seem to understand it half the time either. So, I mean, it never stopped them from getting paid and showing yeah. ass on TV. So. Well, I am. I, you I just love gotta wait until a really big play, and then be like, 
holding. <laughs> <laughs> really big Offside. play. Roughing the passer. You haven't heard from us in a while. <laughs> what was he? Out of bounds. Yeah. Defense Personal foul after the play. Contact. Well, you know, when I was growing up. That's all you got to do. When I was growing up in San Francisco, we didn't have a baseball team. We did have a baseball team play at Keysar Stadium. You know where Keysar Stadium is? We used to play at Keysar Stadium, and it was the San Francisco. Seals. 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 Yep. No. It was another name. Oh. San Francisco. Oh, God. I can't remember the name. Well, of and it. They have Oakland Oaks, right? The Oakland Oaks. And the San Francisco Seals. Seals. Okay. You That's said what Kevin Seals. said. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you said Peels. I don't know. And I think I can still drive. <laughs> the San Francisco Seals. And we didn't have a, uh, you know, a, a National League team in San Francisco. This is Pacific Coast League, I remember. Yeah. And um, so we never became big baseball fans in San Francisco. There's nobody to root for. Right, and all of a sudden one day they say the Giants are moving to San Francisco, and the reason they moved to San Francisco was because the Dodgers York. wanted to move to Los Angeles, L.A. L.A. 1958. 1958, and uh, and and why did the Giants come to San Francisco? Because the Dodgers paid them to do it, because mm -hmm. they didn't want to be on the West Coast without another team out here. And that would cause other teams to then come out and play those teams. So that was, uh, you know, we, we at that point we had a team in San Francisco, but we grew up most of our lives without a team to root for. So it wasn't really a baseball town. It became one after a while. Yes. Most of your lives. <clears throat> most of my life. We had the San Francisco 49ers and the San Francisco, whatever the baseball team is. Giants. The, gi Giants. the Giants. The Giants. New Jersey the Giants? Yeah, but you still have them to this day. Right, right. You know. Although, uh, what was it? Uh, I, how does anybody like the Raiders? <laughs> the Raiders, Raiders are like a girlfriend. They keep bringing the girlfriend back, and they keep accepting the girlfriend. Then the girlfriend goes away, and they still root for the girlfriend. She leaves understand. to go with somebody who has more money than you. That's really what happens. And uh, uh, but I mean, what a, what a lousy team! They come up, they go to Oakland, okay? And Oakland oh, treats the them. 80s, man. They were a good team. It, yeah, it Ken Stabler, Fred Bolitnikoff. Yeah, but know. they are not loyal to anybody. These guys are so unloyal. They'll go to any town that will pay them enough money, and that's why they're in Las Vegas now. <laughs> and the A's are going there also. Yeah, the A's are going to. Yeah. yeah. What, what what who wants to you really play want to stir up the shit don't to you? begin with <laughs> <laughs> who wants to play in las vegas for crying out loud have you ever kevin you better kevin you better turn off your have you ever walked down the strip <laughs> during the <laughs> summer in vegas turn off video the bookies <laughs> yeah the bookies are the one who wants them there oh come on kevin <laughs> that's why it's gonna be the las hey, vegas that. raiders I see guys going, when the Eagles were playing, I was like every, every Josh, like every the, the face mask call for the two point conversion that they didn't get all these things. I was like taking snapshots and sending these guys because I'm so mad. Oh, boy. Jalen didn't throw to another guy who was wide open. I took a screenshot. I was so mad. that the game was bad. Yeah. So uh, so they're going to uh, to yeah. Vegas as well. Wow. Uh, think of all the less traffic we'll have in the Bay Area. By the way, yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand how all of a sudden it's acceptable to have all these teams, and now the gambling is so big. I just, I don't. Did you hear about I, the guy who owns? It's like bo boxing. I stopped watching like fifteen or twenty years ago just because the 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 bouts were so terrible and going. So yeah, bad. Did you hear this? This guy from uh, Madison Square Garden, Dolan. Um, uh, is, is somebody is accused, some woman is accusing him of having done something objectionable to her? I, do you have you ever heard the story, uh, um, um, uh, Josh. Josh? You were moving. I saw a headline, but I don't. I didn't know who it was, so I didn't. Yeah, read it. no, it's uh, Dolan, and he owns Madison Square Garden. The other thing he owns, they just 
they just put up that sphere in Las Vegas. Mm. Oh. Which is an amazing facility. Yeah. yeah. You know. The only <laughs> thing is they had like YouTube open there and I saw videos of it and the place is so huge and that screen is so huge. Yeah, you couldn't even figure out where you two was in the, in the theater yeah. playing the music, you know. I mean, huge. But I would love to see that thing. It it's, it seems mm -hmm. to be a lot of. Fun. Tell me when you're flying in. I'll meet you there, and I'll drive you around. Don't worry. <laughs> You'll meet me there. Well, yeah. there Marjorie doesn't they? want to go to Las Vegas, and I told her. I love Las Vegas, and she goes, "Why?" <laughs> and I said, "Because it's the silliest city in America." You can see Broadway tunes in Las Vegas at half off. It's a great time for like two or three days and then go home. Yeah, well, you you know right what? I used to have and to go and spend to five days there because I would go to work a convention. I was a hooker at the time. And uh, <laughs> I, I would have to work at the conventions for a technology company. And uh, I'll tell you, more than two days in Vegas, you're going squirrely. I, yeah, maybe yeah. Apple Computer will hire you to speak for them in Las Vegas. Well, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go back to Vegas on those terms. I want to go there, stay there for about two days, and get the hell out. You know? Because beyond that, because unless you're really into gambling and losing your life savings, uh, you know, there's nothing to do in Vegas. Uh, but, it, but, but I told her it's the silliest city in America. I mean, where else are you going to go? Where you're, you're two blocks away from the Eiffel Tower, which is two blocks away from uh, the, pyramid. uh, the pyramids. The you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, the whole thing's silly. And about four blocks away from Camelot, you know, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous, but it's a fun city. So. And the pyramids. Yeah, that, hmm? that, that, sphere, that sphere, they show some people with the seats. Uh -huh. You always see the videos from the guys, you know, people with the seats that are on that top, that top level. But they've showed some people with the underneath uh, the balcony, and they can't see shit. It's so bad. Yeah, but I mean that sphere is amazing. That yeah. is just amazing. <clears throat> and they, and they're putting nice videos on it and so on, doing interesting stuff. What well, they haven't done yet, they haven't done. I haven't, haven't seen that they've done an eight ball. Um, <laughs> they've done an eyeball. They've done yeah. an eyeball. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun. Anyway. Yeah, that thing they they built, I don't know how long it took, but I remember going there like 15, at least 15 years ago, and it, they were still building it. I mean, they were just starting it. They were building it took that. a long time. Yeah, it took a long time. We didn't know what it was. We didn't. We thought it was just an arena inside. But I imagine great. if you're coming into Vegas, it looks great from the air. Yeah, and then they had the F one race, so they showed the you know, the the like um, uh, emoji with the eyes, and then they're racing around. They sort of show the eyes, sort of just follow <laughs> as they go by. It's funny. What going by? The the car. The yeah, you know, they had the F one racing mm -hmm. downtown this uh, during uh, so November. So the eyeball follows and it. The, yeah, they had the emoji, and they're sort of just looking around at the cars when they're going by. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Wow, that's they incredible. said it was a, they could but the car drivers could actually see that's like that. two miles away. Yeah, way across town. You know, Alex Trump has a uh, a five star hotel there. You could probably stay there. You know that that was the cheapest hotel when I went there last month for the it was, it was for the championship years game, ago when and I, I still there. wouldn't stay there. <laughs> you know, you know why it's the it cheapest. cheapest hotel? Why it's the cheapest is nobody wants to stay there. Exactly, I think right. so. I think yeah. the gold flake was coming off the outside of the building. <laughs> By the way, next time you and I are going to have because your daughter is going to school in Oregon. That there, I saw somebody, a woman on television today, a young girl, who, a young woman, I should say, who was looking to go to college, and she was given a, uh, 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 what do you call it, a scholarship to a school in some state that won't allow abortion. And I she just can't bring herself to go there, even though she got a great <clears throat> scholarship. Like she's looking at uh, different states in order to go to versus on the laws that they have about abortion and stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, that's all these states need to realize, too, man. Boy. Women ain't going to want to go come to them. Look oh. at Adrian. Hasn't she grown up? Look at her. Yeah. yeah. She, she's tired. We got we to gotta get up early tomorrow for our competition. So she's. Uh, competition. She's, okay. Well, good luck in your competition, Adrian. And thank you, Brian, for being here as well tonight. Thank you. Uh, Jason, uh, we always love having you here, you know. Uh, uh, Charlie, good having you here. You know that. 
as well as Josh Wheeler, the lovely and attractive Alan, and also uh, the um, the Santa Claus of the show, uh, and uh, uh, what fan? What are you a fan of? The 49ers? Okay. Yeah, start yeah. it up again, Alex. Go uh, ahead. Okay. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you. <laughs> Kevin, everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. You know who's next? Amy Manuel. Great show. And she um, does the intersection. And she'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday with the uh, uh, pop up show that goes out over Facebook at 4 30 and, uh, excuse me, at 4. And then on, uh, let me see, next next Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.